Hey, there's a player here. Where are you at? I can't. I just heard running, and I and you weren't moving. Just he's probably headed into the the thing right now. He might be in there. I just heard running, but I didn't see your fucking. Yeah. Yeah, like actual running, and you're kneeling, right? We learned a lot during that firefight, and in fact, this is not where our story begins, it's actually where it ends. You see, Devil's Castle was our final battle on this server, and as we would soon find out, it was the most impactful event during our time here in Shinaris. But what's important is not how this journey ends, but rather, the journey itself. And to understand that, I'm going to have to bring you back to where it all began. I spawned into the server just west of a town called Novaya Petrovka. This, in itself, was a welcoming surprise, because as every player of Daisy knows, you tend to spawn in on the coast. The coast generally has lower tier loot, which leads you to lower tier weapons. However, if you are lucky enough to spawn further inland, you stand a higher chance of gaining access to higher tier loot. Maja server or not, this was a good thing, because I actually spawned so close to Tizzy military base that I couldn't pass up the chance. With this, though, comes inherent dangers. As with anything in Daisy, high tier loot almost always means high tier dangers. And with a server that caps off at over 100 people, I was likely to run into other players. Add in the fact that this is a kill on site server, and my first mission became even more dangerous. But off to Tizzy I went. I feel like the move. Probably, the best move would probably be to go over to Tizzy since it's not that far away. Maybe get some some guns to sell. This is gonna be a pretty big risk for me. Um, well, I, I, honestly, I don't have anything to lose. I don't have anything on me. I have a shit ton of nails. Alright, here we go. The goal here was to loot as quickly and efficiently as possible on a small section of Tizzy, primarily where the tents are located. I did not want to run into any other players this early on. My thinking was that if I could get in and out of Tizzy with minimal to no player contact, I could start my time on the server in a positive light. So, I collected anything I deemed of value and that I could carry as fast as humanly possible. Get some. I don't. I don't know what the currency is on this server. I'm assuming. 
regular money. Um, I don't know what goes for what, but I think I have three guns on me. I'll keep one, and I have a few other things that I can sell. I just don't have a ton of storage space, and I wasn't willing to go further in because I want to get a I want to get a base set down. finally made it to Green Mountain Trader, and I had a plan. Sell all of the stuff I got from Tizzy and purchase base supplies. But there were a few issues. I had never been here before. Not only that, I did not acquire enough loot to make a ton of money trading. Let's try to sell, Let's try to sell some guns. on him um, all right I should have some attachments I can sell and then there were these guys fuck you why though just wanted to beatbox a bit I thought you guys were going to rap for me the fuck yeah, I was boosting you up. Oh, that kind bad. of... It that, was that, supposed that, to be that, good. Ah, that kind of... Fuck yeah. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> like fuck you saw the bit. Okay. <laughs> you see, I wasn't completely new to DayZ, but this was my first time playing on PC after recently switching over from console. There were certain aspects of modded trader posts that I wasn't used to. Things like in-game currency, NPC traders, and modded loot, weapons, and gear. It's safe to say that I spent a considerable amount of time trying to sell and purchase loot before finding out that every player started the server with 100k, which was accessible via the in-game ATM. to that I can go in it I had no idea I started off on this server with a hundred thousand dollars no idea that changes things that changes things okay well I have the backpack I can, um, wait. I'm I'm like trying to be very strategic in what I got and now I realize well Yeezy boost. <laughs> you can get Yeezys? Alright, well I'm not. I purchased everything I needed, including building materials from Green Mountain Trader. I needed to stick to my main goal of finding a spot to build a base and not become distracted by gunshots in the distance and engaging in PvP. 
Sadly, I've made that mistake before, and it never ends well, as Death and Daisy always find you at your best and with everything to lose. If I wanted to succeed on this server, I knew that in the likely chance I die, I at least had somewhere to go where I had extra gear and the ability to recover. So, off I went to search for a location that would guarantee my survival in Chinars. I'm gonna go though, and let's get a base built. Let's uh, see how that goes. This way, if anything happens, I at least have somewhere to go to. Um, it'd be nice for once to, you know, make some progress. I just need a small base, I don't care. During my travels, I lucked out and found an abandoned, mostly raided base. I couldn't carry much, but I did get some decent guns. Things were starting off well for me on the server. There was an issue though. I could not find a base for the life of me. Due to the high player count, everywhere I went had a base. Entire map has so many people on it. Should have figured that almost everywhere they have a base. <laughs> I was just about to say, oh, building here. There's a base right there. This part barn gigantic. And there's already a base here. It's it doesn't look like it's base here. I decided it was better to call it a night and resume my adventure the next morning with a buddy of mine, Brayden. It's like F5. Let's see. There it is. I knew with Brayden it was guaranteed we were probably going to get into some sort of action on this server. Nerd, nerd. Look at this nerd, nerd. nerd. His white hair. His white you hair. Old fuck. You old fuck. You old, you old fuck. fuck. You probably doused in maple syrup right now. I'm right Russia. Now. Fuck you. I'm Russia. No one loves no Russia. One loves Russia. Russia, should, Russia be should be nuked. 73 attack, delta attack 50, attack 54. We decided to head towards Gorka. We found a location on the map that looked promising but was a bit of a trek from Green Mountain Trader. Regardless, it was big enough to house the both of us, some storage, and hopefully a vehicle. Now, all we had to do was get the building supplies we just purchased, our gear, and ourselves across the map to this spot. I made it a point for us to avoid other players so we got ourselves situated at this location. This was imperative if we wanted to avoid death and losing any gear we just purchased, which, to say the least, gets many players to question themselves in DayZ.
Raiden looted a military base while I provided Overwatch in a location that would be the focal point of many of our future conflicts, the Shady Supplier. found a vehicle along the way, which we decided to help ourselves to. Why did they just... And at last, we arrived at the location that would prove to be the perfect spot for our base on this server. It was finally time for us to get settled in and fortify a building that would be the source of our supplies, guns, drugs, and anything else we needed to ensure we not only survived, but flourished here in Shinaris. Are you gonna try to speed it? Cause move. I'm, I get... Yes, move. Like you're, no, you're in though. You, you should be able to maneuver it. Um, Bro, no. Oh, oh yeah, you're, thank God. <laughs> just stay in that corner. It's the worst corner to stay in. You're good. Get out of here. All right, perfect. Oh, oh. There, oh. there. You're inch forward a little bit, so we have enough. There. All right. Perfect. No more messing <laughs> around. I hate so, Why are we thing, playing this game? I have actually yeah. three. After we sealed off our base, we decided it was finally time to seek out some PvP. I need to zero these guns if we're gonna fucking shoot motherfuckers. Bro. That's hella close. That's in Gorka. I don't I don't think that's like military. Yeah, that's definitely a Gorka. We determined that the shots were so close that we had to investigate. Are you shooting? No. That's super close to you. That's insanely close to you, dude. There's a base down there, you yeah, said? Yeah, there's a base right here. And that's when we ran into a base that was only 200 meters away from ours and was significantly larger. Bro, it was for me. It was coming from south, like or southeast. That's where I'm at. I'm facing southeast. This is south southeast. Oh, you're right facing here. southeast. You moved like far as fuck away from me. All right. <laughs> the, fuck, that's really close to me. And the door at the bunker just opened, but they're fucking. All right, I'm staying in the tree line. Yeah, stay there and hide. We circled around the base looking for other players, but they were nowhere to be found. Oh 
However, we did find something even better. Something that would make use of an item I found earlier in the game. Yeah, if there's a fucking vehicle here, dude, I can fucking hack this because I have the hacking machine on me. Well, there's a base right here. Yeah, so. Right off. Drive it away. Yeah. There's actually. Sorry. Yeah. There's. After a lucky robbery of the vehicle we found nearby, we decided to head towards Northeast Airfield for a quick loot run. We figured we'd come across other players and maybe some decent gear we could sell. We didn't come across many players and didn't find any high tier loot, but Brayden did find something even better, a level 1 key card for access to a bunker on top of a mountain. I got a KA, which is, it's okay. Is that you that's jumping? Yep. With this key card discovery, we decided to head right to the level 1 bunker and unlocked it. I didn't really have a firm understanding of how this server worked up until this point. You see, much of the high tier loot was actually locked away at King of the Hill events and at airdrops. Ready? Yeah. This is trash. Yeah. Oh, there's holy shit! It's a fucking golden gun right here. Bibs. Go ahead and get it. Here, what is it? It's a golden saw. <laughs> what? Bro. Yo. This is a fucking. I don't know what this is. Because of this lucky keycard find, we were able to find gold guns, drug bricks, and electronics. All items we could sell for a significant amount of cash. USB drive. Black Sweet. drug Yo, there's a brick here. We got I got one too. Alright, I got a brick. We can sell that. And... Go up and over. Get back to base. Okay, so let's backtrack a bit. Remember the beginning of this film when you witnessed me and Brayden just about to engage another player before shots rang out and the screen went black? That was one of two high tier military traders. You see, the way the server is ran, if you want to purchase or sell high tier loot, like the kind we just found at the level one military bunker, you're going to have to pay a visit to one of these two military traders or the shady supplier, which is where I'm at right now. To make matters worse, all of these zones are PVP zones where kill on site is allowed. Like I said in the beginning of our journey, High tier loot almost always comes with high tier dangers.
for a second. Dude. There was something else I noticed during that run. It was the amount of money we got for candy or hard drugs. I know we didn't have anything to manufacture that in our base, but I did know that we had seeds of another candy laying around. So, we decided to plant them. also noticed that we made some improvements to the base to further our chances in case of a raid. We now had only yeah. one entry point, with an airlock, and all of our tents had padlocks on them. It was time for us to travel to the high tier military trader at Devil's Castle to sell the gold guns we found at the level 1 military bunker earlier. Something you should take note of is that drugs, gold bars, and computer parts could only be sold at the shady supplier while gold guns and high tier weapons could only be bought and sold at the high tier military trader. We were about to find out what like happens when we run into another player at these locations. Well, if one of us dies, the other one just hightail it out of here. <laughs> Bro, what? I swear I just picked it up. It's not in my inventory. It's in your Crocs. Oh, it's in that Crocs. It it's went in into that Crocs pouch Crocs that I put down. You got Crocs pouches. Can you lock it? No, you can lock it. You have a key? Yeah, but I'm carrying this. It won't let me lock it when I'm carrying it. Go for it. I don't like being right here. <laughs> Bro, what the... F Raiden decided to scour the immediate area for more guns to sell while we were here. Unfortunately, I began to have mic and sound issues, so it becomes difficult to hear me during this time. Nothing. a fucking PvP tactical belt on the ground? Nope. I just fucking bought one. Someone's here. Someone's here. Someone's here. Kill him. I can't get out. 
Go, 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 go. Uh, run out. He's gone, bro. <laughs> we searched around briefly for the other player in the ghillie suit, but decided to get out of there. But then, a short series of events had us make a U-turn right back to Devil's Castle. Bro, let's wait for him. Where is it? You don't have any, you don't have any ammo. Yeah, I have. Do you, you have any 308 round or 308 magazine? Give me a 308 magazine. I have that fucking. Uh, see where I fucking mark? Right behind us. Yo, right here. Someone over here. I lost him. Yeah, I lost him. Where'd he go? Yep. He's gonna hear our footsteps. Do that. You where he went? Wow. Okay. Nah, there's a couple. feeling he'd be at the trader that we were just at. So that's exactly where we headed. Yeah, you go to the hole. I'm watch I'm moving over to the front entrance. I don't know. I'm not there yet. Yep. Yep. Yeah, he's dead. You post up. He's, I'm taking his car key. He's got two car keys. I got some nails for you, bro. Yeah, I'm just gonna sell his fucking M4. Oh, he's got, he's got sniper rifles too, bro. His wind, he's got the 50 cal Windrunner. I'm grabbing that, and I'm gonna sell his ballista. Just kills you. <laughs> Here, 
I'm gonna drop all these random ass car keys that I have. I thought you grab you need to get me shit also, that's why I was like, okay, I'm gonna grab more so I can also get a gun. Okay, so here's the deal. Daisy on PC is made up of numerous types of servers with modded items, loot, and maps that not only make the game enjoyable, but fresh and new for players who have been playing for years. As I said before, I played console Daisy for several years, but at this time I was a freshie to Daisy on PC. My Virginia to PC gaming was about to be on full display, and we were going to pay with a large amount of deaths that would have us scratching our heads for the rest of our time on the server. on the other side of that fucking bridge. Kill him? Oh. Am I clear to run back? Mark, press the door. Oh, I'm dead. Just kill me. Fuck. There's a ton of shit. And so the death spiral on the server began. It almost felt like other players knew our exact location the moment we fired, yet we had no idea where they were when they shot at us. Gun on you? I got like eight zombies following me. What? You're not dead yet. Oh. We Jesus. thought about quitting the server, but then we had moments like this that kept us coming back. Mark it. I'm running toward you. at me. He's right, he's toward me, like in between me and you, dude. He's in between me and you. Along the wall. Did you get him? Yeah, you got him. Fuck yes. Yeah, I saw him. He like crouched. But more often than not, yeah, but this was the norm. Oh, here's a teddy bear. Oh, fuck, where? Where, where? Mark him! Oh, he's like... 
down that way. I think I just got your job. Is that you shooting me? No, it's him. I'm dead. I'm dead. Get in the fucking truck and drive away. Keys on my body. We were frustrated and I felt like it was time to leave this server. But I was determined to find out why we were dying so quickly and what we could do to fix it. So, I started asking questions. Hey. I got a question. You got a mic? You got a question. Is the vest I have on the best vest on the server, or is there a better one? Vest? This one? Yeah, what's the best vest on this server? Or play carrier? 5e11. I guess so. 511? They saw that oh, at the high tier military trader? Yeah, yeah, over there. That is best the one, I guess. Okay. This one is uh, it's like a second second tier. Yeah. I, I don't know. What, what is the name of this vest? This one's a 6B23 Russian. Ah, oh, 6B23. Oh, I got it. It's uh, it's like a second or third tier. It's, it's better, but it's not the best. So, what'd you say the best was again? Because I'm, I want to get that one instead. Oh. I guess 511. 511? Okay. Yeah. You wanna send me that helmet, brother? No, I'm actually looking for a vest. Uh, yeah. You gotta get the best up. Is yours like the best one? It looks like yours is uh is yours better than mine. Yeah, you've got you've got the sec you've got the third best vest up. Oh, uh, which is the one you have on? Uh jug. Oh, they don't sell that at the high tier military trader? Because I was looking for it. Yeah, high tier. Uh, 400k, I think. Oh, that's why. I only had 300k on me. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, 400k, bro. Alright. That's why. They're all running around with this fucking juggernaut vest. The one he's got on. I don't have. I don't even have that on. I get this at the high tier military trader. This was my light bulb moment. I knew that this jug vest was something my team could use to finally progress even further on this server. Without it, we stood almost no chance in any firefight we engaged in. I was aware we had just over 1 million in our base and that the vest was 500k. So I took just enough money to buy the vest in the event I was killed along the way. Um, I want to get my team a bunch of stuff, but that's too much of a risk right now. So. Take out a little bit more money so I can get pants. I don't want to recover this money. I just need to be able to. Okay. If I die, we're not fucked, but we're just in a bad position. Without, without the proper armor or...
about four people on, four or five people on, other than me. So this is a chance to get this shit taken care of. I wasted no time in heading straight to the high tier military trader while the server had low player numbers. The next day Brayden logged on. I figured I'd finish growing the weed we needed so we could get the ball rolling on our drug business. About to have a brick of fucking uh, a brick of weed. I already got packs. I just need a few more to make a brick. I got so much star dog getting made. You still gotta fucking do the update thing after. Alright, got all these done. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Yeah, so we got enough to make a brick. This was it. We finally had a sustainable source of income through these bricks of weed that we could sell to the shady supplier. Now, all we had to do was get Braid in a jug vest, and our experience on the server would make a turn for the better. I got a brick of star dog weed the plan now was to head back to the high tier military trader and purchase Braden the same jug vest I had then we would loot the tents in the surrounding area for guns that we could sell to that same high tier military trader before leaving as you recall we had been to the area on numerous occasions we knew it was a hot spot but we rarely ran into players there even if we did, we now had the armor that made us a tougher target for anybody we contacted. You got everything you need? Alright. It's the same shit as last time.
Are you clear in there? Or? Somebody was just in here. I watched the door while Brayden bought a jug vest and some guns. server's about to reset. Let's, uh, let's check these, check these tents and they can bounce. When the server reset, I had a strong feeling that another player would try to quickly push towards the trader we were at, assuming nobody would be there because everyone was still loading back in. Hey, was there a player here? Where are you at? We had lost so much confidence from losing, dying, and starting over again and again. Every time we fought another player or group of players, we were killed. But this was our chance. Our chance to finally turn things around. And this time, we had the gear to back it up. I can't, I just heard running. And I and you weren't moving. Just he's probably headed into the the thing right now. He might be in there. I just heard running, but I didn't see your fucking. Like yeah. Like tat, 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 tat. Yeah, like actual running, and you're kneeling, right? I wasn't a second. Even with our new gear, our deaths on the server left a dark cloud over us. And a loss here would set us back so far, it would be nearly impossible to recover from. But we wouldn't let that stand in our way. And we knew this was the time to push forward despite so many losses, so many deaths, and so many failures. We would not let the fear of another death hold us back. We only had to answer one question. This is 
bullshit. And that question was answered for us. Our journey on this server finally came to an end, and it all seemed abrupt and sudden. Brayden was eventually killed and decided he was done. We never really did get that one defining kill that set us up for future success, nor did we attain a large number of kills that kept us engaged. Our deaths on this server did give us a greater purpose, lessons. We learned how to deal with failure in a game that pushes one's resolve like no other game can. We learned that being afraid to fail in DayZ is the first step to quitting. And ultimately, we learned so much during our time here that there really was nowhere to go but up. I knew that I'd be back, on a different server and with more experience, and with that thought, I figured it was time to stop letting other players on the server decide my fate, and to take that fate into my own hands. And that's just what I did. I look at this as not an end, but a new beginning, because in day Z, you will always respawn. I would leave this server with the mindset that I'd be back, that I'd be back even better, and on a new server as a fresh spawn. And let's just say, that is exactly what happened. I shot him, he's dead. Got him, he's dead.